Hi, bot builders. This is Andrea Galately from Team Witch Doctor on the TV show BattleBots. And this is episode six of Witch Doctor Jr., made possible by Send Cut Send. Today is finally the big day. We're going to turn your robot on for the first time. In episode five, we learn how to safely use and charge your battery. Charging your battery on the wrong settings can ruin your battery or even risk a fire. So please make sure to go back and watch that episode if you missed it. Since we're going to be doing some functional testing today, make sure to prop your robot up on something so that the wheels are not touching the table. If for some reason your wheels start spinning unexpectedly once you turn the robot on, the robot won't drive itself off the table or into yourself or another person. This is standard practice across all the weight classes. Let's start by taking a close look at your electronics to make sure that everything is held in place. All the wires are connected correctly and there's no exposed electrical connections. We do this final check every single time we go to plug our batteries into Witch Doctor. Once everything looks good, make sure that your switch is in the off position so that your robot doesn't power on as soon as you plug your battery in. For this robot, you want to make sure that the power plug is connected. Once you check that, you can plug your battery into your circuit, making sure that you're connecting red to red and black to black. Since your switch is in the off position, nothing should happen when you plug your battery in. This is a good thing. If it does, unplug your battery and find out why. It may be an exposed electrical connection, or it may just be that your switch was on. We won't put the top armor on yet, since we're first going to do a quick bench top test to make sure that everything is working correctly. If we do need to tweak something, it will be much easier to have access to the electronics without that top armor on. Next, we're gonna power on your transmitter. It uses eight AA batteries, so make sure you install those first. Then, take a look at the transmitter itself. You're most likely gonna drive a robot with the right stick. You'll notice that the stick is spring-loaded, so once you let go of the stick, it returns to the center and your robot will stop moving. Once you're ready to add a weapon, it will be controlled by the other stick, which is not spring-loaded. This means that when you turn your weapon on and you let go of the stick, the weapon will stay on. Now notice the small sliders beside and below your drive joystick. These sliders control the trim, and they allow for fine adjustment of each motor. I'll show you how these work once the robot is on, but for now, you want to make sure that they're centered. Once your transmitter is on, with the trim centered, double-check that your wheels aren't touching anything, and then go ahead and remove the power plug from your robot to turn it on. Congratulations, your robot is now powered on. You should see some lights on your speed controllers that confirm that it's on. Your wheels should not be moving at this point. If one or both of your wheels are spinning slowly on their own, you may need to adjust your trim. The trim is an adjustment of the center point of your remote control. To stop a wheel from spinning slowly on its own, meaning where you're not giving it any input on the drive stick, just slide the trim up or down until it stops. Feel free to play with this setting just to see how it works. Now let's check if our robot drives in the correct direction. Make sure that your wheels are still not touching anything, just in case the robot drives in a direction that you don't expect. Let's push the drive stick forward and see what happens. Your robot's wheels should both move in the same direction, forward. If either or both wheels spin in the wrong direction, you likely connected your drive motors backward. This is an easy fix, so you can just unplug and swap the wires. If your wheels didn't move at all, make sure that your wires are securely connected to your motors. And double check that you connected the PWM wires into your receiver in the correct orientation. The black or brown wire should be toward the outside of the receiver. Once both wheels move forward, when you push the drive stick forward, we're ready to continue checking the drive. Push back on the drive stick now to see if both wheels move in reverse. Then, check the right and left direction. If any of these are wrong, check the wires on your drive motors or your receiver to fix it. Now that you know that your robot drives in the right direction, we want to make sure that both wheels start moving at the same time. Push forward on your drive stick as slowly as you can and see if both wheels start moving at the exact same time. If one starts a little bit before the other, use a trim adjustment to get them to start moving at the same time. By now, you may have noticed that the lights on your speed controller change as you move the drive stick on the transmitter. These lights are helpful for troubleshooting electrical issues with your robot. When you push the drive stick forward, the light will blink green. 
full forward will show a solid green light. As you push the stick in reverse, you'll see a blinking red light that turns to solid red at full reverse. If you see a slowly blinking red light, regardless of how you move the drive stick on the remote control, it means that your speed controllers are not getting any signal from the receiver. This may be because the PWM wires are plugged into your receiver in the wrong orientation. Like we said before, the black or brown wire should be toward the outside edge of the receiver. It might also mean that you just forgot to turn your transmitter on. The last thing we need to check before our first test drive is the failsafe. A failsafe makes sure that your robot reacts safely if it suddenly loses signal from the transmitter. If you bought the kit and transmitter from FingerTech Robotics, this should already be set up for you, but you should still check to make sure. If it's not, just check the instructions that came with your transmitter to set it up. I'm going to go ahead and push the drive stick forward, and then turn off the transmitter while the wheels are still moving, as if I just lost transmitter signal. The wheels should stop moving right away. The same test will also be part of your functional safety inspection once you go to a tournament. Once you're comfortable that everything is working correctly, you can power your robot off. Now we'll attach the top plate and get ready for our first test drive. Go ahead and find a safe place to drive your robot on the ground. Make sure that there are no pets around and stay away from the ankles of family and friends. Since your robot only has two wheels, the front edge of the wedge will slide on the floor, so make sure you're driving on a hard surface that won't get scratched. It won't dry very well on carpet or rough terrain like grass or pavement. If you already have a weapon on your robot at this point, Make sure to physically or electrically disconnect it. That way, it can't accidentally spin up while you're practicing your driving. Otherwise, you want to make sure that you practice driving inside an arena that's safe enough for your weapon. Once you find a good spot to practice driving, go ahead and repeat the same power on sequence as before. Turn your transmitter on, and then turn your robot on. Once you're standing in a safe place, go ahead and practice driving your robot. Start out slow until you feel comfortable and then you could pick up a little more speed. A lot of beginners want to drive the robot full speed all the time, but the reality is that it's way more important to have control than speed. You'll see pretty quickly that your robot is very fast. I almost never drive my Antwerp robots at full speed during a competition. Remember to set a timer while you're practicing your driving, so you don't drive the robot too long and risk damaging your battery. Take a look back at episode 5 if you need a reminder on how to calculate how long your battery will last. If you notice that your robot doesn't drive in a straight line very well, try adjusting your trim settings to see if that helps. You can also double check to make sure that your wedge is mounted straight. Since your robot is sliding on the tip of this wedge, this can affect your driving. Turn your robot off and place it on a flat surface. Loosen all four wedge mounting screws a turn or two. This will let you tweak the position of the wedge. Push it against that flat surface and then tighten the screws again. This will make sure it's straight and your robot will drive much better. Congratulations on building your first working robot. In my book, you're already a robot builder, but I'm sure you're already looking forward to your first event. The most important thing you can do to prepare for that event is to practice driving. I can't tell you how important this is. Most competitions are won by the best driver. You can use tape to mark off the size of the arena on the floor to help you practice. Most Antway arenas are either 4 feet by 4 feet or 6 feet by 6 feet. You can also set up cones to create a driving course and develop more control of your robot. Upside down plastic cups work great for this. Once you start getting more comfortable, you can ask a friend to drive an RC car around and you can chase them. This will help you practice reacting to another driver and it's also a lot of fun. I would like to thank Sen Cut Sen for making this video possible. In the last episode, we went ahead and ordered some custom parts from SenCutSen.com. Let's take a look at what happens after you place your order. Right on their website, you'll have access to your order tracking, so you can follow along with the process. I placed my order on August 10th, and later that same day, I could see that my parts were already scheduled for laser cutting. You'll be able to see when they're being prepared for the laser and cutting, when they're going through final inspection, and when they're getting ready to ship out to you. Once the parts have been shipped, you get a tracking number, so you can follow it from this link right here, or you'll also get an email with the tracking information. Either link will take you straight to the shipper's website, so you can keep track of your package until it arrives at your doorstep. I ordered this part on Monday, and it arrived by Friday. I can't wait to open this package in our next video. 
Thank you for supporting this video, Send, Cut, Send. Now that your robot is working, it's time to start preparing for your first event. Start thinking of a name for your robot and your team. In the next episode, I'll show you what to expect at your first tournament, and I'll tell you everything you need to know to be competitive and have a great time. If you have questions on any part of the build so far, please leave them in the comments below. Your robot is now working, but we still have a lot left to learn before you're ready for your first event. I'll see you at episode 7, where we'll talk about everything relating to tournaments. Until then, happy building!